Marrickville Council recognised this was a significant building in the main street and the fact that it had been effectively closed for 15 odd years was an incredibly negative presence on the main street. They don't like to see heritage buildings sitting empty because they're at risk of vandalism, fire, destruction. And so we were putting to council a far more holistic view of the heritage of the building and its adaptive reuse and I think that that was very well received by council. big and bold building, so you had to make something that was at the scale of the building. And then it's quirky, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big volume and you know how you can get access to light and air and views, how you can keep privacy, how you can still keep a character of the grandness of the cinema. All of those things are real challenges and they're the things we had to grapple with. An unusual building. Most of these buildings were built as cinemas in the 30s. This was built as a theatre in 1921, but then it was turned into a cinema only after the war. It was a very big suburban theatre, seated something like 1,500 people. Interestingly, as a theatre, it had no backstage whatsoever, so exactly how the performances ran is, is not completely obvious. I think they must have got changed in the street or in the lane <laughs> and just run onto the stage through the fire door. These buildings are complex. You don't want to, in a sense, purge them of their richness. And you know, so much heritage tr treats it like, well, the significant period was from 1948. It's like the building hasn't lived in the meantime. So we don't want to do that. We think that all periods um, are worth representing in some way. So we have tried to keep artefacts from the building that we can put into the common areas as we can. actually owned the footpath. It was part of our site but was used as a de facto public footpath. And so that means we could bring balconies out to the face of the lane and um, make the facade much more three-dimensional. All the new large-scale openings for the verandas that we've made, which are two storeys high, they're in the positions of the original openings in the facade. So we've reinterpreted their logic and we've increased their scale. We thought the roof trusses were an incredible aspect of the building. Uh, it's one of the things we found out at the very beginning of demolition. We could somehow crawl up through the bio box and take a photo of the trusses which had never been revealed in the life of the building. They were put up in 1921 and then boxed. So we moved the apartment grid so that instead of being on the line of the truss, it was slightly to the side. That meant that each truss could be within a unit which meant that there wasn't a fire rating problem, we could keep the entire truss, and you live with this enormous piece of beautiful assembly of iron and timber, which is of a level of craft which you can't do today. Every developer um, has an idea of maximising return. There's, there's no other brief. Our task as architects is how to get the most in that are the best that they can be. 
because in fact our, our cities are tragically low density. So we're not against uh, density, it's how you, well you do it as an architect is everything. And it's how you get quality and quantity meshing together, that's what gives you a successful project. There's something like 15 different plans out of the 27 units, so there's a huge variety. There are one and two storey apartments, there are apartments with roof terraces, there are apartments with two roof terraces, there are others with um, two balconies, there are others with a single balcony. They're all quirky, they're all put into the building in a very particular way. They're not stock standard apartments. The, the Dutch architect Aldo van Eyck talked about the importance of homecoming and architecture should celebrate the journey of homecoming, which we completely agree. And in multi-unit housing, so often that experience is completely banal. The same glass door, the same lift button, the same dark, short, mean corridor. We didn't want any of that. And so you come in here, you, you can see the ruins of the original fire escape above you. You come up into the big space, you can get a sense of the airiness of the big volume. I think when you're an architect and you, you see a project, near enough's not good enough. You actually want to get as much into it as you can. And so there's a whole lot of things in construction I would have liked to develop further that you simply can't given the time and the cost parameters. You know, you never want to say it's, it's sort of perfect. It's never perfect. You could always be better. You've got to have that sense as an architect. Otherwise, you become quite complacent. Always got to think how it could be better. Yeah.